Good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for your time. Sorry for our delay. And this is a kickoff meeting for RTP NISB Jr. And my name is Dr. Tony Arna McFarland, advisor for the chapter. We're having our first meeting tonight, um, just kind of getting things going. We do have a little bit more time to get others signed up. I know things are a little hectic this year with school and students getting back in person. And um, actually our chapter really just finished a, um, a programming camp in August. So thank you for being with us tonight. And we're gonna go ahead and get going. Our NSB Junior um, members are on. And first of all, just wanna thank you. If you would like to put something in the chat, let us know how you found out about the meeting tonight, what you're hoping to get out of the meeting. If you're new to NSB Junior um, and you want information about that, we'll talk about that tonight, but just let us know who you are and why you came out. And if you are a parent, if you are a student, or you're interested in volunteering, just put that in the chat. And as we get going, I'm going to ask Imani uh, why she's available, if she can just kind of keep an eye on what the chat is saying. Um, and uh, let us know if there's anything that we need to pause and address. We have a lot to cover. But the first thing we're going to do is just talk about NES, because I know we do have some new people. Some people had reached out to me via email and uh, are interested in joining the chapter. So. I'm gonna ask our uh, president, Jairus, if he could talk about what NSBE is, Jairus. Of course, so <clears throat> the National Black Society of Engineers, um, like the slide says, it's one of the largest student governed organizations in the US. It was founded in 1975, um, as most, most people up here no, um, we definitely know, we definitely know our history. Uh, we played a lot of cahoots on our history um, with many, many chapters. Um, and I've even met somebody who was in a um, NSBE chapter um, like outside of the US before, really outside of the US, the connections outside of the US. So that was pretty cool. Um, and it were, we were founded by the, um, it's known as the, <clears throat> well, if you go to the next slide, it's um, known as the next slide, the Chicago Six, along with their teacher, um, well, along with the professor Arthur Bond that formed the, um, the first chapter back in 1975. And we actually um, had the unfortunate pleasure of one of the um, Chicago Six, Mr. George Smith, um, along with his grandson coming to one of our meetings last year. So that was a very cool opportunity. Excellent. And thank you, Josh, for sharing that. So um, just as he said, um, those are the founders of photo of them. Uh, four of them are still living. And when we get the opportunity to absorb and uh, learn from them, we really enjoy it. Actually, Mr. Smith spoke to the professional chapter recently as well. So, um, and we do have an opportunity to work with him on a history book. So he reached out to me after that meeting and I'm gonna be looking for a couple of NSBE Junior members to assist with that project. So they're working on pulling together the history of NSBE. And Imani is going to lead us in the mission. She'll just uh, speak it for us. And if you are there, read along with her. If we were in person, we would stand and say this together. Imani? The NSBE mission. NSBE's mission is to increase the number of culturally responsible Black engineers who excel academically, su succeed professionally, and positively impact the community. One of NSBE's goals is to graduate 10,000 Black engineers per year by the year of 2025. Thank you, Imani. And by participating in our chapter and our programming, you can help us um, reach that goal. And just a little bit more about that. If you are new to NSBE, um, there is a pipeline and NSBE Junior is the beginning of that pipeline for grades K through 12. The college level um, is the next level. So we hope to prepare students to go to college, prepare them academically, financially, with experiential learning, with leadership skills, so that when they get to college, they'll be, they'll be ready to succeed academically there. 
they will be positioned to get internships or learn about entrepreneurships and uh, be able to give back to Nesby Jr. And then they would matriculate onto the professional chapter. Our, our chapter is sponsored by RTP Nesby, a professional chapter. And once you get to the professional level, uh, as uh, many of us on this call who are in that chapter, we would need ongoing career development, higher education advancement, and we would give back to the collegiate chapters as well as the Nesby Junior chapter. So that is the pipeline that has been created um, by the Nesby organization. And uh, just a little bit about Nesby Junior. I do know that our uh, PCI chair for RTP Nesby is on. I asked him if he wants to share anything in a moment, but uh, pre the pre-college initiative program is designed to stimulate interest in STEM basically. Um, and we do that with various activities in a moment. We'll talk about what those are. Our goal is to encourage students in grades K to 12 to attend college and pursue technical degrees. There is a shortage of STEM professionals by 2025. In the world, we're gonna need 3.5 million STEM professionals. We have more jobs and we have um, uh, individuals ready in the pipeline. And because of that, we cannot afford to exclude anyone. So that's why diversity is so important in STEM because we all win when everyone is able to share their fullest human potential. Our PCI programs provide activities to help students discover firsthand how engineering and technology related uh, skills can be applied in the world around them. So uh, we'll hear more about that. If you are new, we'll have some information at the end to um, help you with registration, help you understand how to do that. And um, we also will stay on, stay on the line a little bit to walk you through that if you wish to do that tonight. And who are we? We launched uh, in October, 2019. As of July, we had approximately 50 members. We are starting our new term that started October August the 1st. So now it's time for everyone to sign up again. The term runs August the 1st to uh, July 31st. Our local dues, um, actually that's seven now. I need to correct that the local dues went up a little bit because we're using um, a new way of registering to help us manage it. But overall, our dues will be a total of um, $12. Actually, that's right, $12. And the local dues are going to be um, seven. So I'm sorry, national is five, local is seven. So that's how we're getting at 12. And if you are in K through two, uh, K through second grade, uh, local dues will be seven. And if you're locally, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel area, that's what we serve. And we do have members who are in other states who participate virtually. And right now we will continue to be in virtual uh, mode until further notice. And um, like I said, we'll walk through signups later. And when we decided, when our chapter, when I say I with the Research Triangle Professionals wanted to go and um, support in this Virginia chapter, we realized that at one time there were 12 chapters in the area and all of them were inactive except for the one at the North Carolina School for Science and Math. So um, with that, we decided to proceed with starting a chapter for the community in hopes that this would inspire uh, chapters at the schools to rekindle or either um, they could join our chapter if that was appropriate and also to get others um, interested in, um, in the having chapters. So that is a little history about us. One thing of order of business we wanna to do tonight is induct our new officers. Our president, uh, returning president is Jairus Cook. Um, new vice president is Lauren Lascano. Treasurer Ryan Hebert. I don't think he's joining tonight, uh, but he's returning. A new secretary is Imani Izigo. Iz Iz Program chair is Jonathan Winstead. We do have a new position called um, the Academic Excellence Chair. Um, really McDonald, who is a prior officer, is going to be doing that. And in that capacity, um, focusing on making sure students are utilizing the NSBE resources that are available to them to um, make sure they're doing their best in school and also to provide best practices and guidance on how students can um, excel. And then um, our Senator is LaVar Jr. Brandon. And um, basically 
we have we are required to have uh, we were required to have him as a, a chartering um, officer so that we could have what we needed. And I, you know, I feel it's best just to continue to have him there in case we ever um, are in a position where we have to uh, uh, recharter. Hopefully we don't, but as long as we have our specific officers and he represents the membership, we'll be in good shape. And then over to the right, um, our advisors and volunteers who have ha helped in the past, um, pre-COVID, post-COVID, and hopefully we'll have some other ones. If you are interested in volunteering, please post that in the chat. I will save the chat and follow up on activities there. Um, if we haven't spoken about it already, please put that in the chat for information on how you can do that. So officers, um, this is what I'm gonna ask you to do. I will ask you to come off a of mute. You don't have to be on camera if you don't want to. I'm going to uh, read the induction oath to you. And an oath is a very serious promise, it's a pledge. And it's something that should not be taken lightly. Because you are under 18 years of, old, of age, um, I'm going to make a slight adjustment and, uh, and say I will do my best for to sol solemnly pledge because a pledge is a very serious thing to do. And with the support of your advisors and the leadership, um, we, will, we will make sure that you're able to fulfill this commitment. We will help you with that. So what we will do, first of all, I will just ask you to each state your name and the office. And we'll start with you, uh, President. Hi, I'm Jairus Cook. I'm the Nesby Junior President. Hi, I'm Lauren Lascano, and I'm the Nesby Junior Vice President. And I don't think Ryan is on, but he would be treasurer. I'm Imani Eziogu, and I'm the Nesby Junior Secretary. Hi, I'm John Dewan and, um... Okay, I think you broke up there, Jonathan, but Jonathan is program's chair in Breland. Uh, Breland, are you on? If you are, you may be on mute. I thought you were on. Okay, I don't hear Breland. She may not be on. And LJ Brandon is senator. So what we will do, um, everyone has said their name. And if you agree, at the end of this, I will, each, I will ask you each if you will agree to this. So I will say it and follow along. I, and then the names that we just stated, will do my best to uphold the goals, mission, and objectives of the National Society of Black Engineers. I will do my best to perform my duties to the best of my abilities in the service of NSBE. And in this particular case, Nesby Jr., I would do my best to work in a concerted effort with other executive board members to implement the national directives as Nesby moves towards achieving the goals and objectives of Nesby 2025. I will do my best to support the membership and their endeavors, and most importantly, to work to increase the number of culturally responsible Black engineers who excel academically, succeed professionally, and positively impact the community. And I will ask each of you if you agree. Jairus, do you agree? I agree. Lauren, do you agree? I agree. Imani, do you agree? I agree. Jonathan, do you agree? I agree. Congratulations. You are all officers of the Research Triangle Protégés chapter of the National Society of Black Engineers. Thank you. And if you guys want to send in some shout outs in the chat or some congrats, feel free to do so. Um, this is a very important step in your readiness for college and your career. And as you will hear tonight, uh, these students are outgoing. Uh, I have worked with all of them um, for at least a year. They have shown they're uh, just uh, deserving of the opportunity. They've been on research projects, they've been on competition teams, they've done, uh, they've done um, their own academic uh, excellence at school. They have um, just displayed that they have a very promising future and we want to just help them secure that. And um, as I say that, we're going to next salute 
Hispanic Heritage Month. Very important. This is very important because um, as Nesby Junior members, we understand the importance of diversity in STEM. And we want to also recognize and celebrate others who help ensure that there's diversity in STEM. And our very own Lauren Lescano is going to uh, speak to us about um, these uh, several, she's gonna speak to us about um, Hispanic inventors and scientists, but first, just a little background information. Uh, you ready? Lauren? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Okay, so for some background information on Hisp Hispanic Heritage Month, um, it is a month in which the people of the United States honor the achievements of Hispanics. And the celebration was first authorized in 1968 when the US Congress adopted a resolution asking the President of the United States annually to issue a proclamation designating a week in September, including September 15th and 16th as National Hispanic Heritage Week. In 1988, Congress expanded the celebration to a 31 day period beginning September 15th. And Hispanic Heritage Month coincides with the celebration of Independence Day in many Latin American countries, including Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, Mexico, and Chile, as well as with Columbus Day. Awesome. And I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, Lauren, you have your own uh, slides, I believe. Yes. She's going to give us some historical information um, as we spotlight Hispanic brilliance in STEM. Okay. Um, can you all see my presentation? Yes, we see it. Okay. Okay. So some Hispanic inventors and scientists. Ellen Ochoa is an American engineer and former astronaut of a Mexican descent. She was the 11th director of the Johnson Space Center, which is its first Hispanic director and second female director. And Ochoa joined NASA in 1988 as a research engineer and was selected to be an astronaut. Ochoa has been recognized with NASA's highest award, the Distinguished Service Medal, and the Presidential Distinguished Rank Award for Senior Executives in the Federal Government. Franklin Ramon Chang Diaz. Diaz is a mechanical engineer, physicist, and former astronaut. He was born in Costa Rica in the 1950s, and he is the first Hispanic astronaut American Hispanic astronaut. And he also became one of the first scientists without a military background to regularly fly aboard space shuttle missions. And he was able to do this because he was highly qualified with his doctorate in applied plasma physics from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. While undergoing astronaut training, he was also involved in flight software check out at the Shuttle Avionics Integration Laboratory and participated in the early space station design studies. Guillermo Gonzalez Camarena. Camarena was a Mexican electrical engineer and he's well known for his invention of a color wheel color television. He was granted a US patent for a chromoscopic adapter for television equipment. And this invention was used in NASA's Voyager mission in 1979 to take pictures and videos of Jupiter. Jacinto Convite was a Venezuelan scientist and he's known as the creator of a vaccine for leprosy. And he did this by combining a known tuberculo tuberculosis treatment with an armadillo bacterium in 1987. And after encountering this disease's stigmatized victims during middle or <laughs> medical school, he soon dedicated himself to helping treat them and to come and to combat the social stigma under which they lived. And he also developed a vaccine for leishmaniasis, a protozoal skin disease linked to poverty and malnutrition. 
Luis Alvarez. Luis Alvarez was a Mexican-American scientist who was involved with many engineering and research projects. He is most known for being awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1968 for the development of the hydrogen bubble chamber. And this invention enabled the discovery of resonance states in particle physics. Some other of his projects include building the US President Eisenhower an indoor golf training machine and trying to locate an Egyptian pyramid's treasure chamber using cosmic rays. In 1938, Alvarez identified orbital electron capture, which is radioactive decay in which a nucleus absorbs an orbital electron. In the following year, he and Felix Bloch pioneered measuring a neuron's magnetic movement, which is its tendency to align with an applied magnetic field. Cesar Milstein was an Argentine biochemist that did antibody research, and he is most known for producing the first monoclonal antibodies in 1979. As a result, he became one of the fathers of modern medicine. By combining mouse spleen cells with immortal myeloma cells, Milstein and Georges Kohler produced large amounts of long-lived identical antibodies. And together they were able to win a Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1984 with another scientist, Niels Koch Jern. Alejandro Zaffaroni. So Alejandro Zaffaroni was an innovator in biotechnology and drug delivery, delivery systems from Uruguay. And he founded several biotechnology and pharmaceutical companies, including ASLA. And he played a significant role in the development of the birth control pill, the nicotine patch, the DNA chip, and corticosteroids. Zaffaroni spent around 60 years helping to conduct research that led to the birth control pill. Severo Ochoa. Ochoa was a Spanish physician and biochemist, and in 1932, he went to the National Institute for Medical Research in London, where he worked with Dr. H.W. Dudley on his first problem in enzymology. In 1932, he found an interest in enzymatic mechanisms and went to research it in America, and he was able to win the Nobel Prize in 1959 for discovering an enzyme that can synthesize RNA, and this discovery helped people to better understand hereditary genes. And that's it. Thank you. Um, thank you for listening and allowing me to highlight some important Hispanic inventors and scientists. That was excellent. I learned a lot. I don't know about you all, but I learned quite a bit. Are there any questions for Lauren? She did that research and um, I heard some terminology that we've been hearing recently um, in regards to COVID and um, the vaccine. So any questions for, for Lauren on it from anyone? Um, I actually have one. Um... And yet, yeah, also, that was a really great presentation. Um, <clears throat> is there any one of them that, like, that sticks out to you um, for any kind of reason? Uh, I think for me, just um, the first two, Ellen Ochoa and Franklin um, Ramon Chang Diaz, just because they're um, very recent inventors and they can really show how Hispanics can excel in STEM. And NASA is a pretty big part of our country too. Yeah. So, yeah. I have a question for you, Lauren. Um, what do you hope you can inspire others to do from the Hispanic community with your interest in STEM? Like, you know, what are your what are your hopes and your dreams, and how do you um, hope that you can inspire others? Um, me personally or with this um, presentation? Just you personally. <laughs> um, I guess I just hope that I can inspire others by trying my best in everything I do. I hope to um, become a software engineer and 
hopefully I'll just excel at that and be able to show other people and other Hispanics how they can also excel and that it's an achievable thing. Right. Excellent. Well, Lauren, that was great. And I know we're going to see that we're going to see those um, scientists and inventors in a Kahoot game at some point. So I'm going to ask if you don't mind sending us a PDF version of that so that we can study and be and be prepared to um, answer questions in the future. Yes, I can do that. Awesome. Excellent. That was very good. And also just a little more information on Lauren. She actually participated in our team immunity um, uh, activity. She was a part of team immunity for the prior year and they did COVID research on um, more specifically to the tra traditionally medically underserved and we focused on the black and brown community. So Lauren was a team lead, her and another student, Breland, uh, worked together. They did a paper. We learned quite a bit. They even presented their research and what they surveyed um, here locally uh, to uh, medical professionals in the public health community who actually wanted to hear more about it and they still want to follow their research and what they um, learned. And um, you know they have been in touch with me about that. So Lauren, I know you said software engineer, but I don't know if they're gonna let you, let you slide away that easily. So you may have to reach back and continue to do some of that work you did earlier this year. Sounds Wonderful. good. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. So um, we're going to get back into where we left off. Give me one moment here to get situated. I see we still have a few people chiming in. And also on that same note, um, Imani is going to talk a little bit about SHIP. So Lonnie, um, Imani, tell us what SHIP is. Um, SHIP stands for the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, and they are working to close the gap between Hispanics and STEM. So in 1973, um, Rodrigo or Rod Garcia was, he is um, a working civil engineer for the city of Los Angeles. He led the charge to diversify STEM and to overcome barriers he and his fellow Hispanic colleagues faced. Um, SHIP was officially formed in 1974, and some other things that I learned was that SHIP is the nation's largest association dedicated to fostering Hispanic leadership in the STEM field, and they're also actively narrowing the gap in the Hispanic STEM education pipeline by offering financial aid, um, among other things. Excellent, and thank you, Imani, uh, for doing that research on SHIP. And uh, does SHIP sound familiar to anyone? Does that story sound familiar? And that's just a question for anyone on the call. I see a lot of similarities between how SHIP formed as well as how NSBE formed. They actually were around the same period. Um, NSBE was in the early 70s, but it was college students. But uh, SHIP was um, engineers were actually already working and they recognized that they were facing barriers yet, even though they were already you know, working in their field. And they, they had meetings in the garage and decided that they wanted to form a national organization to help pave the way for other Hispanic engineers to follow. So um, great information, both of you. And we hope that we'll be able to do more activities with CHIP. Um, I'm involved with uh, uh, colleagues at work who are part of CHIP and we do um, some things together with Nesby and have talked about things that we could do together in the community. So look, looking forward to more of that. And just on supporting our mission, if you are interested in um, knowing how you can support us, you can do so with your treasury, your time, talent, or testimony. So treasury being your donations. Maybe you want to provide a donation to us. Maybe you want to volunteer time and maybe you have a certain talent that you want to teach or just want to tell your testimony. Hearing the stories of others is very inspiring to um, someone who is seeking to be an engineer or STEM professional. And all of us who are engineers who work in STEM can tell you someone inspired us. We heard someone's testimony. We heard someone's story that helped us believe that we could achieve as well. And as I say that, is there anyone on the call 
that is an engineer who wants to just briefly say who inspired you? Uh, I can go. I had a engineering teacher um, in high school and his name was Mr. Drain and he inspired me. He was an electrical engineer, but he came to teach for a little while. Okay, and please uh, introduce yourself and what you do. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, my name is Chumasi. I'm a uh, software engineer at IBM. Thank you for sharing it, Chumasi. Anyone else? Well, if you would like to put something in the chat as the meeting goes on, if you are an engineer on the call tonight, please post in the chat um, what type of engineer you are, where you went to school, and where you currently work. And that will help our students know the possibilities for themselves. You can also, like I said, uh, give online through PayPal, or you can email treasurer at nsberTP.org. That is the professional chapter's uh, treasurer email address to make a donation to us. And at this time, we're going to talk about the programs that are offered by RTP Nesby Jr. And our program chair, Jonathan Winstead II, is going to give us a little information on that. Jonathan? And you may be on mute, Jonathan, if you're speaking. Okay, maybe we lost Jonathan. Okay, I can grab him real quick. Okay. Okay, hold on one sec. Yeah, his internet just dropped for a little bit. He'll be coming right on. While we're waiting for Jonathan to join in. Hello? Okay, go ahead, Jonathan. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll cut mine off. I thought he was coming off. Yes, we can hear you. So, Jonathan, what are the types of programs in RTP Nancy Jr.? Okay. I think, you're, I think you might have dropped again. All right, not hearing you, Jonathan. So maybe you're having technical difficulties, but as you can see here, the types of programs are individual activities, technical research, camps and courses, Dr. Tony, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can okay, hear you. Okay, here he is. Go ahead. Okay, hello. Um, so we have individual activities, camp courses, technical research, uh, competitive teams, special interests, exploring, and academic enrichment. Excellent. And then, uh, Jonathan, just say a little bit about the experience you had as a part of the Voyagers this year? Okay, so the experience I had as part of the Voyagers, we uh, did an earthquake project uh, where I acted out and made like a model of an earthquake. Uh, we did research on them, uh, all four of us who were in the group, which was uh, Nana, uh, me, Amani, and Daniel. And what helped them, um, what we did during it, uh, or how it helped was, we did a lot of uh, working together. Uh, we depended on each other and uh, it took a lot of research. Awesome. Anything that you learned, I guess, from, from that experience, from that research in regards to earthquakes, about your understanding of earthquakes? Um, I learned more about the magnitudes, the uh, ring of fire, and more about the plates. Okay, excellent. Thank you for sharing that, Jonathan. Thank you. 
And um, we'll talk more about other programming in a moment here. Um, I just want to mention to a few things that uh, were shared in the most recent advisor call, just uh, parents for um, your knowledge. Um, all of the NISB Virginia advisors, there's a recent change, have had to go through a background, background check. Anyone who chaperones or volunteers offsite or overnight has to have completed a background check. If you want more information on what that means and you know what was considered acceptable, I can provide that. And um, anyway, that doesn't you know change anything from us going forward because we are already um, qualified there. And if you're still interested in volunteering, doesn't mean that you cannot uh, without the check. It just means that you would have to have um, someone there with you who has uh, completed the background check. So thank you for interest in volunteering. If you would like to get the background check, you still can do so. Next, I am going to ask Arshi from Cortex if she is on. Arshi, are you there? Yes, I'm on. All right, so Arshi is a part of a FRC, which is a um, first robotics competition team, and they have been strong partners for RTP Nesby Jr. And I'm gonna let her speak a little bit about something they're working on. Yeah, I actually have a presentation. Sure. And Arshi, what year are you this year? What, what grade are you in this year? Uh, I'm a junior. I'm an 11th grader at awesome. Robert Carter High School. Yeah. Awesome. So like Ms. McFarland said, um, I'm a part of Cortex. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about Cortex Brainstorm. Um, but first, who is Cortex? So Cortex is a community-based high school robotics team in the Cary area. And we were founded in 2014. Um, and so we participate in FTC or in FRC, which is the first robotics competition in which we build and program a robot in a six week period. Um, and on our team, we have several different departments. We have engineering, which is responsible for building the robot. We have controls, which is responsible for programming and electrical. Um, then we also have outreach, which I'm the director of outreach at Cortex Robotics. And so we love to spread STEM within our community and we work with local partners such as the, NT such as the NESV RTP chapter. Um, and then we also have a marketing department on our team, which is all about spreading the word about our initiatives and also managing our social media accounts. And then we have business, which is um, raising money for our team that our departments can spend. And if you have any particular questions, feel free to email us at cortexrobotics at gmail.com. Um, so I have a quick video to show. I think I need to stop sharing because I don't think I shared the sound. Can you hear it okay? Yes, we can hear it.
All right, so that was just a video that we had um, from our competition at the beginning of 2020. So now I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the engineering design process. Um, so first we start off with design, which this picture on the left shows um, a picture from our CAD software. So CAD is used to um, design our robot and we can design it down to like the nuts and bolts even. Um, and the reason that we design instead of going straight into fabrication and assembly is because we don't wanna get halfway through fabrication and then realize that, oh, if we put this bolt here, then we're not gonna be able to attach our mechanism. So to make sure that fabrication goes as smoothly as possible, we design everything and get all of the kinks worked out in CAD itself so that we aren't faced with challenges in fabrication. And so over here, we then test our robot. So in this GIF, um, if we're testing our shooter mechanism, for example, and we're noticing that the balls are consistently falling, falling short of the target, we know that we might have to adjust our code and um, give more power to the motors. So testing is obviously a very crucial part and it helps us uh, make sure that our robot meets our standards. Um, and so finally, that results in a competition ready robot. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about Cortex Brainstorm. So just a quick overview. Um, this is all about providing high school NSBE members with the technical experience that they need before college. So we'll be developing their engineering, design, and programming skills. And we'll be offering Java and or Python trainings, and also some practice with the engineering design process. Um, so you can choose whether you'd like to focus on programming or engineering. And the projects and resources that we actually will give you in this program, um, they're the very same resources that we use to train our own members. Um, so by the time this program has ended, you'll have had like the full training in the department of your choice um, between engineering and programming. So if you're interested, um, please fill out this interest form. Uh, you can scan the QR code here, and I will also put this link to the Google form in the chat afterwards. Um, and feel free to email me at mahajanarshi at gmail.com if you have any questions. And I'll put my email in the chat as well. Um, does anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask now? Arshi, I'm going to try to grab the form real quick, too. Okay. We had a few people who had to leave early, but I want to make sure they get this because I know they're interested in coding. Is it um, necessary for someone to have prior coding experience? Not at all necessary, no. So we'll, people of all with all levels of experience are welcome to apply. Um, and I just put the link to the interest form in the chat and I will also put my email in there. Okay, someone wants to email me. Okay. And we do have a few members who uh, participated in a coding camp with Microsoft this summer and uh, have had have been a part of some of your prior coding camps. So I'll see if any of them um, have any questions. I'm looking in the participants list. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on Ryan a little bit. Ryan, I know you are very passionate about um, programming. You're really good at it. Any questions for Archie? Uh, I don't think I have any questions. Okay. I see a few others. What is the time frame? I guess do you know when you want to get this kicked off? Um, yeah, so we don't have all of the uh, specific details worked out since we're still in the initial stages of planning. Sure. Um, but we're probably aiming for starting in October, maybe end of October. Okay. So I guess it'll be safe to say that if people are interested, they should probably um, fill this out within the next two weeks. Yeah. And then okay. um, if, yeah, so we asked for your email on the interest form. So as soon as we get more details, we'll send that out. Okay. Excellent. And just to um, let you know, like I said, Cortex has been very supportive to RTP Nesby as well as RTP Nesby Jr. Um, I'm also a part of Cortex been a part of them since 2016. I don't get to spend as much time with them as I would like to, but 
We also, you know, have um, done um, outreach together. Uh, Arshi was one of our coaches for our FLL Explore team, the Visionaries. And we also had their support with the Extraordinaries, which is also a Lego team, as well as I think it was T-Mall. I think they helped out with T-Mall as well. Trimethylon. All right, I think I do see something in the chat. Okay, what grade? What grade is this for? Yes, yeah, so this is open to all high schoolers. So ninth through 12th grade. Okay. Now, if you had a middle schooler who was already programming and pretty good, would you consider them? Yes, definitely. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions for Arshi? All right. Well, if anything else comes up, Arshi will definitely forward that information to you. And thank you for coming out and sharing this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, and similarly, next, um, I'm just gonna speak briefly about Beats Unlocked. And um, we're planning to register RTP Nesby Jr. to do this. And I've already spoken to a few people about working with it and uh, helping us out here. I'm not a coder, that's not my background, but I try to do a little bit, I try to learn. So if this is your expertise and you're interested in helping facilitate this, uh, please let me know. So basically Beats Unlocked is offered by Facebook. Um, we can actually bring it to our chapter. There's a workshop and some facilitation has to happen. It can be implemented in person or virtually and it includes flexibility in um, the facilitation options. I do believe that this is slated for middle and high schoolers. And I don't have all of the information just yet, but just wanna let you know, this is something that we're wanting to do. If you wanna just pop something in the chat and say, hey, yeah, I would be interested in that. So we'll have an idea of how many people uh, have an interest. When we get more information, we can distribute it appropriately. And also if you're interested in volunteering for it, um, as a, um, a lead facilitator or someone who has expertise in music or coding. So it's going to be bringing those two things together to teach coding. All right. I don't know if Keyshawn is on. Keyshawn Brown from NC State Nesby. I don't know if he was able to join or not. Okay. I don't, don't hear Keyshawn. But Keyshawn is the PCI chair for the Nesby chapter at North Carolina State University. We have exchanged a few text messages, haven't spoken yet, but I do know they are planning a PCI day. Um, I think they're looking at having it in November. I don't have the specifics yet. Um, I know in the past that's included them inviting high school students over to NC State who are interested in STEM and kind of giving them a tour and a walkthrough I don't know what all of the activities are, but it's basically a full day of activities from like eight to five. Um, with the pandemic though, I don't know if they will be doing that on site. Um, if not, I believe they're still planning to do something at least virtually. So I just wanna give you the heads up that's coming up. And I believe that is gonna be targeting high school students. He is reaching out to various high schools in the area to um, gain interest and to make the um, school officials aware of it. And that's all the information I have. And if there's anyone on the call who has participated in a PCI day and you have something that you can share, please let us know at this time. Hey, Tony. Hey, Elliot, how are you? Elliot, good. I uh, just wanted to say uh, I have had experience with this day. Um, I was actually one of the people that used to organize it at NC State. Oh, great. And, Excellent. Um, yeah, back in two, 2013. And so it's it's like when we did it, like you were mentioning, Kishan is um, reaching out to different schools. And those schools, like we reached out to Neil Middle School and they brought a bus of students out. Okay. And we essentially, they, they have basically mentors paired with groups of students. 
and those students get to tour NC State and essentially even go to classes with oh, those, okay. uh, college volunteers and uh, everything's, you know, safe. Um, they're advised to not, you know, you shouldn't be going back to any, any places that are not the campus right. or classes. And um, then everybody comes back to the meeting spot and the students are then uh, dismissed and go back to school or picked up by their parents. Okay. And uh, so you said middle school, so it could possibly include middle school students because that's what you've done in the past. Yes, uh, middle or high school. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for giving us a little bit more insight on that. So with that in mind, um, if you're interested in possibly participating in the PCI day, put something in the chat and say, hey, yep, that is something that my son or daughter would uh, be interested in doing. Um, let us know so we can have an idea of uh, how much interest there is. And I just also, while I have Elliot here, just want to take the moment to say that he is the president of the Research Triangle Professionals chapter. And Elliot, I'm glad you could stop by and visit with us tonight. And you're also a Nesby Junior alum, correct? Yes, um, I, in Charlotte, I went to Harding University High School and uh, they didn't have a really established chapter. Like you mentioned, chapters will go extinct without their advisors. Yeah. So thank you for <laughs> being an advisor. Um, and so, uh, you know, it didn't last long, uh, but we had a few, a few meetings and that was like my first exposure to Nesby. Awesome, okay. Well, thank you, Elliot, for providing that information and uh, giving us that insight. And actually, actually, I can probably connect you with Keyshawn, too, because he might want to talk with you about that. Okay. Excellent. And I just wanted to say a great, great meeting. And I really enjoyed all the presentations so far. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. While I'm speaking about the PCI Day, that stands for Pre-College Initiative, by the way. Do we have any other Nesby Junior alums on the call? If so, you want to say something, you can make a remark about it and how um, you know the Pre-College Initiative helped you out. I think I saw a few more in the chat. If you want to put something in the chat, you can, or you want to say a few remarks. Feel free to do so. And Justin, I believe I saw you um, there. Are you uh, wanting to make any remarks about the pre-college initiative? Anything you want to share about what you have been researching and what you are um, hoping to be able to do in the PCI chair role? Hey, Tony, yeah, sure. So. Uh... So I was trying to get off mute. Yeah, so I'm a, um, I am a, um, a PCI um, alumni as well. So a Nesby Junior alumni I'm at Dudley High School in Greensboro. Um, and it really helped me to get um, some initial exposure to the world of engineering. Um, while I was at Dudley, I ultimately wanted to be a mechanical engineer and then got to state and realized that I did not want to be a mechanical engineer anymore. So um, I opted to go the industrial engineering route. Um, and as far as, you know, just kind of being in the PCI role, really what I'm hoping to get is um, really hoping to come up with some events that um, focus specifically on different age groups, right? Middle school students need something different than high school students and high school students need something different than elementary school students. Um, and, and really just uh, focusing in on, um, number one, taking advantage of the events that NSBE uh, National already has planned, but two, making some events that are um, specific to the RTP area and the surrounding areas so that we have our own um, stamp, if you will, on, on kind of the experience that we give to our uh, Nesby Junior students. Excellent. Thank you, Justin, for sharing that and, uh, and for bringing that up. And as you say that, just so people know, we do have a couple of sister chapters in the area. 
um, who would also benefit from the Research Triangle professionals being in the area. So uh, there's only two professional chapters in North Carolina. That's this one that we have in the Raleigh Durham Chapel Hill area and the one in Charlotte. Um, and as far as the next Virginia chapters, like you said, Dudley High is uh, his uh, alma mater there rekindling their chapter. We've been in touch with them, hoping to rekindle the one at Athens High School. Um, they were invited. So you may have some of those people join our meetings in the interim. And also, um, I just saw someone drop something in the chat. I don't know if she's still on or not from Southeast High School. And there's also one in Martinsville, a very strong chapter there with about 80 members. And then the North Carolina School for Science and Math, um, they have a chapter as well. So just some insight on uh, what's going on in this area in the world of pre-college initiatives. And with that in mind, I'm gonna just kind of quickly go through a couple of activities just for your awareness. Um, it's still not too late if you are a NSB Junior member, you have to have already joined and uh, paid your dues, your $12 to uh, be a National NSB Junior Ambassador. Applications opened on September 15th, they close on Friday, October the 1st. They're only gonna select, uh, I think like maybe two or three individuals for this. You will get to represent the junior demographic at the PCI committee. This is on a national level. You will also get to attend the annual convention. It's going to be in Anaheim, California next year. So you get to go there for free. And you also help, you also get to help improve the effectiveness of the NSB Junior Toolkit. And the toolkit is what provides the advisors um, and volunteers the necessary information on programming that's already been established by our headquarters and uh, created uh, with partnerships in mind um, with other organizations. So that's a very exciting opportunity. If you're interested in doing that, we will have the sign up information sent out in the link after the meeting. Um, if you did join the meeting and you did not sign the Eventbrite, please go to that Eventbrite link. I'll put that in the chat at the end. If you didn't sign up through Eventbrite, because that's what we'll be using to send out the information. So anyone who signed up on Eventbrite, I will be sending you a um, follow-up email with the information for tonight. Also in the area of academic excellence, high schoolers, high schoolers, you should be preparing yourself for college, um, especially if you are a junior or senior. Here are some SAT and ACT dates um, for prep classes. I will be sending out, like I said, uh, a link to give you access um, to the CAP test sign-up sheet. This also went out, um, I wanna say it might've been a week ago to the distribution list as well. All of the activities are not specific to Nesby Junior. So for example, this one is open to the public. You can share this with other friends, uh, schoolmates, people you know, family in the event they need it as well. Also, high schoolers, there's a college tour, October the 2nd. It's virtual HBCU college tour. Um, the sign-up information for this will also be circulated, and that's 9 a.m. Central time. You do have to register. I do know that it fills up quickly, so if you're interested in doing that, don't hesitate. Don't wait. You know, it's going to be virtual. It's going to be on the hopping platform, and it's a great way to start exploring colleges. So, um, I don't know if it's just high school, middle school, maybe um, as well, but I think they, I've seen where they have had to be selective on um, priority because they want to make sure the seniors get in there and get what they need first. And just to give you an update on our convention, uh, the national convention is going to be in person right now. It says stay tuned for updates, but that could change. The dates are March the 23rd through the 27th. And that's in Anaheim, California. Um, and at this time, uh, we're still examining the activities that we're going to participate in and what we're going to do. Last year at convention, we had six teams. We had two um, elementary school age teams, First Lego League, League Explore, and uh, they presented. They also participated in some local virtual competitions and expos. We also had the Imagineers which was a middle school team. And Justin led that team. They presented a math video challenge. They worked on it, that, put a script together and, and produced a video, which is still available to be seen. 
We also had two Nance Virginia Explorer teams, the Voyagers, which you heard Jonathan mention earlier, and Team Immunity. Breelin and um, Lauren were part of that team and they did the research on COVID that was very well received and made a, a, a impact in the community. I still have people talking about that, the meeting. And we also had the trimathlon, uh, which was coached and led by Ayanna Ferguson. Um, and uh, she's the programs chair for Nesby. And they basically prepped um, in a quiz bowl, quiz bowl style format uh, on SAT and ACT questions. So that prepared them for taking the, AC, the S, SAT and the ACT. And we had a team of five um, that uh, participated in that. So that's what we did last year, it was very busy. And as a result of all of this effort, uh, we started, I wanna say like November and went through probably April pretty much for these activities, very busy. Like we were um, involved over the weekends and it was it was a lot, a lot of heavy lifting. So we wanna, we wanna be able to make sure we have a bandwidth for what we just decided to do this year and may not be as intense this year. But um, we ended up getting Region 2 Chapter of the Year as a result of uh, all the effort and great work that the volunteers and the students did. So hats off to you all and thank you to everyone who participated. So we'll send out more information on age appropriate, age specific activities that were not mentioned here tonight. Um, if you need to reach any of us, uh, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to Justin at the PCI and you can reach out to Jairus at the Pres Junior address. I will send this out. We are also working on a blog and easy, you know, we're looking for easier ways to communicate to the parents and to the students so you know what's going on. And also a, um, a chart that has the dates, the deadlines and the activities of uh, what's coming up. So I'm gonna stop now and see if there are any questions from anyone. Parents, if you have any questions, um, I'll take those at this time. I have a question. Yes. How are you? I'm blessed. And how are you? I am doing great as well. I want to know if you have a chapter of Nesp Jr. at Southeast Raleigh High School. Um, is this Dr. Garrett? Yes, it is. Well, Dr. Garrett, there is a charter there. So um, great question, because actually that was the first school that I contacted because I was I know they got to have one there. Uh -huh. Before we started our chapter, we wanted to just coordinate some activities with existing chapters. So to my understanding, uh, the last time I checked, they did not have a chapter and I was hoping to get the charter reactivated that is there. I was working with someone at one time. I don't remember her name, but we had a few phone calls and uh, uh, she, I think someone left who was leading that and then they transferred to someone else. And it's probably been about a year since I've been in touch with them. But uh, to my knowledge, there is not a chapter, an active chapter there. Okay. I will okay. say that there is a charter there. Okay. And that helps out. So if there's a charter there. They just need an advisor and they need 10 students, five of them being the officers, and they can get started up again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good question. All right, so if there are questions, I'm sure, sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna piggyback on Dr. Garrett's question. So is it possible, um, must the students reside um, at a specific high school? Can they be part of a nonprofit um, as long as they follow in with your guidelines and, and pay their dues? So for, so it's your question about RTP Nesby Jr.? Yes. Yes, this is a community chapter. So. Our chapter is not specific to a school. This is a community chapter. So as long as you um, pay the dues, you are following our guidelines and you know um, our protocol, that's, that's all that we ask that you do. We even have students who don't live in the area. We have some students in Atlanta, Delaware, 
um, different parts of the state, you know, Alabama, we had a member that relocated and he still wanted to be a part of this chapter. So that is not a requirement. I have talked to some schools about um, being a satellite for our chapter. So for example, they have a club at their school, maybe they have a STEM club already and they have members, um, they have people there who wanna participate in our chapter, but there's not a, a chapter at that school. So um, that is an option as well. I've talked to a few teachers about trying to get something like that off the ground. Um, no, I don't have a success story yet, but we do have kind of uh, some irons in the fire on that one. Okay, no, that's great. So just, just um, to expand on that a little, so to have a satellite or to actually um, have a chapter that's connected to Nesby Jr., does it have to be within a high school? Like, can there be a nonprofit that basically would have a chapter or satellite that works with youth that would have them involved in the program? Yes. So actually we kind of do something like that already with Garner Road Community Center. So um, Garner Road Community Center has a number of youth programs and they have students there who are interested in STEM. So what we do is um, they are members of our chapter and I coordinate with their director on our activities. Some of them actually are on the call tonight and she's like the point of contact. So when we have stuff coming up, we coordinate our calendars. So our activities don't overlap with her activities and she makes sure that they, you know, their dues are paid and they know what's going on. So she kind of like, I guess you could say, is there their uh, um, liaison to what's going on here and they're members of our chapter. Okay. So yeah, so, so I'm speaking basically um, on behalf of a startup um, initiative, STEM initiative in Raleigh. And um, the idea would be to, be to do a pilot that involves STEM activities. So based on, you know, you all had a lot of different programming ideas and, and, and also partners like the Cortec uh, Robotics, but mm -hmm. is there basically a way is what we're thinking about. And this is still sort of in the brainstorming uh, phase to involve those students in a short-term initiative that would be done as a, as a pilot so we can learn from it in terms of their overall experience and then report back to possibly scale the program. You know what I'm gonna do, um, Angela, I'm gonna put my information in the chat to you uh -huh. so we can talk um, offline. It sounds very interesting and like we might wanna talk about it in more detail. So I'm giving you my information right now. Hold on, let me make sure I'm giving you the right, right information here. And I'm with Dr. Garrett, by the way. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, good. So I've just sent it to you as a direct message. Okay, got it. Yes, and okay. uh, feel free to give me a call. You wanna shoot yours back to me via okay. my phone, just text it over to me, that's my cell phone. And we can talk more offline. I mean, I, I like what you're trying to do. You want to get students involved in STEM. And I'm, I'm all about efficiency. You know, we have something that we can leverage and collaborate on. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. You know, everybody is strapped for resources and bandwidth. So exactly. um, <laughs> I'm all about, you know, let's pull our resources together and, uh, you know, let's examine the, op the opportunities and the possibilities. Okay, great. Thank you. Sounds great. Yeah. Great questions. All right. Well, that's all I had for tonight. I do want to mention just briefly, because I know everyone may not want to uh, uh, get involved in, I would say, like a very heavy, heavy duty or heavy lifting um, activity, um, as we were just speaking about. Um, some other opportunities would be to participate in um, as Jonathan mentioned, we do have individual activities. So for example, we have the astronomical adventurous that we kind of launched in the spring. And there's a few of us who really love looking at the sky and we look at planets and we have uh, telescopes and astronomical binoculars. So if you, if you have a child who um, you're not so sure that you wanna be, you know, you have the bandwidth and the time to heavily commit to a routine activity or cohort or series, but you want STEM information that you can do at your own leisure and with your family. So that's, a, that's one approach. Just make sure that you fit some STEM into you know, uh, their lifestyle. 
Um, so if you're interested in something like that, we do have those opportunities. Right now, we just started it with, with that particular one I mentioned. Um, another area that um, we will probably get more like that in is coding. We've had several coding camps and coding opportunities. So maybe uh, your student is not that ready to commit fully to coding and you need something that's less intense. So just maybe having a coding day where you have a little hack or something, you just kind of try it out with or explore more before you really dive into it. So that's another um, activity that we are exploring. So uh, that's something that you can think about before you say, yep, I want to sign up for Legos. Yep, I want to sign up for uh, brainstorm. Yep, I want, you may want some more time to just kind of soak on it a little bit. And I do advise giving the students time to see what piques their interest. Um, I'm hoping that we can do something else with the life sciences, um, all of the opportunities right now to learn about um, virology and, um, uh, you know, uh, biotech. That's very um, needed. So we want to maybe have a, an activity with the company in the bio and pharma space to help students see if that's something they're interested in, if they want to go that route. I'm going to end the meeting and stop the recording. I will hang Tony, out. What is that link in the chat for? Uh, let me see. Uh, Tony, that was me. I was trying to invite them to a um, financial aid grant scholarship workshop on Sunday and it didn't come out right. So I'll send it to you so you can send it through email. Is that the NAACP? Uh-huh. Okay. All right. I have that on my phone and I will send that out. Thank you for reminding me. I will send that out in my follow-up notes. And, and that's this coming Sunday? It is. Okay. And what, what time is it? It's from three until four, I believe. Okay. okay. Is there a sign-up? It is a sign-up link on the, on the flyer. Okay, I'm gonna look for it real quick and see if I can find it. Actually, I do have it. And I will see if I can get it. Uh... Yeah, there's a bit.ly link. Let me just see if I can type it in real quick. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that is uh, Miss Mo Johnson, who is a good friend of mine from college and um, we can never fall out because we know too much about each other. <laughs> so anyway, she manages a, a number of programs for the Garner Road Community Center. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get that to fit in. It didn't quite come out right. I won't hold everybody up. I'll go ahead and end the meeting. And uh, you may still... be able to paste it. You may be yeah, able to what, paste it in the chat. That's what um I had to just type because I have it on my phone. And I put what I oh. what I see here, but it didn't quite come out right. So let me try it again. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not I'm not able to get that to come up right. I'll just try to see if I can find it. All right, everyone. Thank you for your time tonight. We're gonna go ahead and end here. Um, as I said, if you have um, additional questions, I'll stick around for a few minutes. And uh, thank you for coming. Bye-bye.